Hello everyone! The clip you're about to hear is from one of our exclusive Patreon episodes on a recent horror release, and just like all of our other episodes, it might include major spoilers for said horror release, so don't listen to it if you haven't already seen it. You've officially been warned. And if you'd like to hear the full episode, just head on over to patreon.com backslash horrorqueers and subscribe today. Without further ado, here is your exclusive Patreon clip. Okay, so Samara Weaving. Yeah, I, I've seen her in a bunch of stuff. Like she was in that Picnic and Hanging Rock adaptation. Of yes. course, she's the babysitter in Mick G's The Babysitter. That's the titular babysitter. Which yes. I really like, but some people, specifically our editor Brad Miska, hates. I also hate. Really? Yeah. Oh, I think it's so fun. No. So I reviewed it not really knowing that it was not taking itself seriously. So this was a case of me thinking it was going to be straightforward horror and then just having it be like, oh, it's just Bella Thorne talking about her tit. Okay. Uh, that joke is really funny. That joke is not funny. It but is mostly really it's funny. because I fucking hate Bella Thorne. Come at me. I hate her. I won't come at you. I it's mean, like I don't Rick think she's Robertson like at the top anything. and then Bella Thorne. Under- <laughs> Bella Thorne. <laughs> <laughs> I like her in the Duff playing the bitchy girl. Oh, you mean another bitchy girl? Because that's all she all she plays. plays. Yeah, but you know, her personal life's been kind of tumultuous lately. I feel like in the past like two or three years, she's like really made a name for herself for being like a drama queen, but like understandably yes. so because like her nudes leaked and Whoopi Goldberg like criticized her, blamed her for it, and blah 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 blah. And she made like a really weird "Leave Britney Alone," but like "Leave Me Alone" type cry video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not getting on your bandwagon for the Bella Thorne apology tour. No, I, ju- I just, whatever, I feel bad for her. <laughs> anyway, so I like the babysitter. So Bella Thorne is not in this movie. <laughs> no, she's not in this movie. Uh, but yeah, so, and, but Samara, did you think Samara Weaving was the best part of the babysitter? Yes, oh god, 100%. Okay. No, I've loved Samara Weaving in, I think, literally everything that I've seen her in. I love her in Mayhem. Mayhem is when I was like, because I also saw her in Ash vs. Evil Dead. She has like yeah. a two-episode arc. Yeah, and I wanted more of her, even though it wouldn't have made sense to keep her longer than the amount of time she has on that show. But even then, she's great. Spoiler alert, she's the one that gets like basically chewed up by the house, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. And I think of the first season. I think so, too. I was trying to remember if it was the first or second season, but um, yeah. She uh, she has a great death in that movie. It's awesome. But Mayhem is when I realized, like, how great she was. And listeners, Mayhem is basically Belko experiment, but funny. Yes. And it's got uh, Stephen Ewan, so it's a person of color and a woman taking on a giant corporation of white men and just beating the shit out of everybody. It's amazing. But isn't one of the higher-ups a black woman? She is, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's basically like, a, but instead of like being locked in the room and they have to like kill each other, it's basically like a virus gets let in. And it doesn't turn them into zombies, but it enhances all of their rage and makes yes. them go murderous. Yeah. They're quarantined in the building until the virus can wear off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and in the meantime, they're just going to murder each other. <laughs> oh, it's so good. But, it's but so that, good. That's where I started to really notice like how funny, cause I, how great she was. Yeah. And then... This movie, because it's, I mean, all these movies were great, but, you know, Babysitter was a Netflix release, Mayhem was an independent release. Yeah. This is her first, like, American big theatrical release. And yes. uh, I'm so happy. Sort of big theatrical release, because it's underperforming at the box office, Yeah, as it speak. is. And it is. I don't think it got a super wide release, because this is one of the last Fox films to get released since Disney acquired them. So Disney was like, fuck you. We don't care about Fox releases. See also New Mutants, which we are never, ever going to get to see. Oh, never. And yeah, so Disney put virtually no effort into marketing this film. They don't give a shit about it because it's not part of their Marvel whatever brand. Yeah. I sound like I'm very down on Disney. I'm not. I'm not one of those people who fears that they're taking over the world, even though they absolutely Mm -hmm. are. But at the same time, if you're going to buy a company just because you aren't the person who greenlit a film doesn't mean that you should try to bury it or actively root for its failure, which I don't think they're 100% doing, but they obviously don't give a lot of shits about whether this movie does well. Right. Which is dumb, because it if sucks. you look at the fucking release, like, if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes score, the way that fans are reacting to it... Mm-hmm. It's very positive. It's a fucking crowd pleaser. It is. <laughs> Get in, losers. This is the Lady Killers, a feminine rage podcast. I'm Jen. I'm Sammy. I'm Rocco. And I'm May. 
Our podcast is a tribute to the female identifying killers in horror and more. Each episode will feature us, your Supreme Court of female murderers, discussing our favorite lady killers from your Julias and Jennifers to your Carries and Christines. We'll tell her story, decide if it's good for her horror, and answer the most important question of all. Would we die for her? Join us on Thursdays as we pull on our sweaters, snatch our ice picks, sharpen our scissors, and honor the lady killers who live on the silver screen. No boys were harmed in the making of this podcast. Yet. (laughs) (laughs) It was late in the afternoon when the professor and I took our way towards the east, whence I knew Jonathan was coming. Jonathan Harker has asked me to note this, as he says he is hardly equal to the task, and he wants an exact record kept. Dear Madam Mina, I have read your husband's so wonderful diary. Strange and terrible as it is, it is true. I will pledge my life on it. God preserve my sanity, for to this I am reduced. Safety and the assurance of safety are things of the past. I am in hopes that I shall see more of you at Castle Dracula. (laughs) Listen to Regarding Dracula wherever you listen to podcasts or find us online at bloody.fm